And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. My notes say, read old intro. Okay, hold on. Um, okay, old notebook. Uh, okay. This is from episode 251. Uh, have you heard of Greater Idaho? It's a possible new state which would be Idaho plus a bunch of east a bunch of eastern Oregon countries that are very Republican. Basically Idaho would be replaced with Idaho Mach 2. I don't remember any of that shit. No. Uh, really? That's weird. Uh, okay, so where's the intro? There it is. Act three, bunny! Act three! Act three! <laughs> yes, bunny, my friend, it is time yet again for the third and final act of the Pope on Film podcast, and it is said third act, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all new same great taste, but now half the sugar movie of the week! And this week we are doing a super rare part two where we will try once again to figure out how one of the world's most successful plays of all time became the biggest flop of all time with yet another look at the astoundingly awful 2019 musical fucking Cats! Oh, that's fucking weird. You'll find out later. That's amazing. That was amazing. Okay, but we're not doing Cats. We're doing a double feature of uh, Ed Wood and Midsommar. Two movies that are very important to me. This is a double feature picked specifically by me. It's the two movies that have the biggest effect on my gender. Real talk, Bunny. The reason why I chose these two movies are less because of the movies, but more because last last episode. I say last week, but it was like three weeks ago. Yeah. But last week, we discussed the 2024... A24 film, I saw the TV glow, and oh my god, I fucking love that movie. Oh, fuck yeah. That hit me like a fucking sledgehammer. And it was one of those things where I saw the movie and I went, huh, that's the movie. And then I went and I, I, I talked to my wife, Natasha, and she's like, how was the movie? And then it wasn't until I started talking to her about it that I realized how powerful it was for me. And yeah. by the end, like, I watched the movie, and I liked it, but then when I'm explaining it to Natasha, that's when I started crying. So then I watched it again, and, and it, it, oh my god, I love this movie so much. It does such a great job explaining what it is like for trans people to transition. It does a great job explaining that. And it in does such a, great a job subtle, quiet way where, you know... I I keep going back and I pick up another piece and I pick yeah. up another piece and I pick up another piece. Every time you go through this fucking movie. Yeah. And I absolutely love this film. And, and I feel like it, well, one of the main reasons why I picked these two movies is I feel like if you want to get to know me better, get to know how May Lin came about. You could watch I Saw the TV Glow and get a good sort of understanding of what it is like to go through a transition such as this. You just got to replace the pink opaque with Ed Wood and Midsommar. There you go. It is, it, it is very, very difficult to be a trans person, especially right now in this the year of our Lord, 2024. It, on this planet, it basically feels like in order to become trans, in order to transition, you have to bury yourself alive and then come out a stronger, different, completely different person. Or 
Uh, another way to explain that would be Mei Lin, me, got Steve, drugged him, then put his body inside of a bear carcass. Yeah. And then put that bear carcass inside of, let's say, a yellow pyramid. Yeah. And, uh, oh, just FYI, uh, um, uh, old Greg is still there. Ah, okay. Along with this painting, which is uh, hanging up on Danny's wall in the park. There's Danny right there. And uh, I painted this on Amber's birthday. I was really proud of it. Be kind of a bitch. And then there's <laughs> Malin's Pyramid. Because that's basically what I did to become a woman. I got uh, the person who I was, and I put him in a bear, and I put that bear inside of a pyramid, and I set the pyramid on fire, and now I feel much better. So that's why I chose this week's film. First off, <coughs> let's just talk about the films for a second. Ed Wood's a weird thing for me to watch now. Yeah? Why? Number of reasons. So many different reasons. So many different reasons. Number one, uh, Johnny Depp does an amazing job in this film. He does a great job. He's incredible. And I absolutely love him. And you, you watch this film and it's like, wow, you're really embodying this Ed Wood as a person and as a spirit. And you're really giving him life. And there's a good possibility when you go home your bed's going to be covered in a woman's shit <laughs> just reeking of of shit and and how many drugs are you on while you're making this movie yeah incredible actor amazing actor but he was on some shit we know that now yeah and then it, it I actually got into a into an argument conversation on Twitter about this recently, but as the founder of the Church of Ed Wood in the 90s, actual thing worth a Google, a lot of people expect me to have gone a specific way in regards to the Amber Heard trial. But the way that I see it is Johnny Depp, was a lying, controlling, violent, uh, manipulative person who was a, who's an addict and is on a bunch of drugs. And it looks like maybe the woman he was dating was the exact same way. So they yeah. are both two problematic people, but most of America will just throw one away and stay with the person who had scissors for fingers when they were a child. I and tried so hard not to pay attention to that whole fucking trial. It was impossible. I was really, really pissed off that I was having to hear about this trial as much as I was, seeing as the Grizzling Maxwell trial was going on at the exact same fucking time that we heard nothing about. Nothing. Nothing about. As far as the overall situation goes, as far as I understand, she won a case in the UK. Back to Johnny Depp. Not Chris Lane. Amber Heard won a case in the UK. Johnny Depp won one in America. 50-50. Tie score. Can we fucking shut up about it already? No. That is why... I'm trying to get the both of them this March at WrestleMania 41 in a hell of a cell. Oh, okay. Well, that's different. Johnny Depp, Amber Heard, hell in a cell. No holds barred. In fact, it's not going to be a first blood match. First shit match. Oh. First of its kind. It's going to be amazing. The money we are going to make from this wrestling match, unheard of. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be like all the, the, the big wrestling matches of all time. Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant, Stone Cold and The Rock. Um, the Big Boss Man 
and Crash Holly. You know, the major one. Yeah. It's going to be huge. But so many people were coming to me during that trial and being like, hey, Reverend Steve, so, so glad I found you here. Have you been following this trial thing? Man, isn't Am Amber Heard a lying bitch? She should just go to hell, that fucking... And, and it's like, damn, dude, okay. I guess everyone just assumes this, but like I am trying to get to a point now where I do like like two Kanye West songs. Yeah. I, and I'm starting to get to that age where it's like I'm trying really hard to separate the art from the artist. Yeah. But I have a I have a really hard time with that. Okay, full disclosure. Full disclosure. Kid Rock's a piece of shit. He's an asshole. He's a far-right douchebag. Yeah. He is a horrible person. But if I'm in the car and fucking Cowboy comes on, I will be singing every word of that song. There you go. Yeah. Fucking, I hate how much I love that song. <laughs> yeah. So it's so I, I I try and go okay then I'm going to watch Ed Wood but it's kind of difficult because it's like okay here's Johnny Depp yeah. and, and and then uh, Criswell is Jeremy Jones oh god yeah and that's really difficult because of all the things that he there's a reason why you don't see him anymore so that's kind of fucked up and then Bill Murray. He's kind of icky now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there have been stories and rumors, nothing concrete yet, but you watch Bill Murray now and you go, matter of time. Matter of time. It's the yeah. same way I feel whenever I see Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, nothing yet. <laughs> but eventually, the fit's going to hit the sham and someone's going to have to stay after school yeah and so watching bill murray i have a hard time with that and okay then... but you know what but since we're on this subject you know what does hurt though huh neil gaiman yeah doesn't that just hurt yeah like, motherfucker it's, it especially hurts because i have been hoping and hoping and hoping that Disney or DreamWorks or the people who made Coraline, somebody get would get off their butt and make an, an animated or stop motion animation or even a live action, some sort of film of Neil Gaiman's other kids book, The Graveyard Book. Yeah. It's such a good book. It is literally just the Jungle Book, except uh, a kid's family, a, a young baby's family is murdered. The, the baby ends up getting out of the house and crawling across the street to the graveyard. It's just the jungle book, but with uh, vampires and ghosts and witches. It, it's just so fucking good. And I can absolutely see a Coraline version of the graveyard book. And I've been hoping and hoping every year that, like, someone turns this into a movie yeah. and now those chances are fucking gone. Because of Neil Young. Yeah. Oh, the author of the book, How to Talk to Girls at Parties. <laughs> Did he write what? He, he made this he made this uh, this uh, graphic novel story called How to Talk to Girls at Parties. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. But he, so, he, just, he just always comes off as such a nice English gentleman, mm -hmm. you know? Very mm -hmm. polite. A lot of yeah. sweet stories about things he's done, you know? Stuff like that. And then it's like, damn. You know, just like disappointing. Yeah. I really like uh, 
the book and the first season of the TV show Good Omens. I never bothered seeing the second season, and now there's a second season, and Neil Gaiman's going to be stepping back from that, but it's like, nah, I'm already... I'm good. I'm yeah. good. But I've never been one of those hardcore Neil Gaiman fans. No. Like, no. it does It does hurt, but, like, also, I'm, I'm not losing any sleep over it. Okay, look, let me put it this way. I read Sandman. Pretty much stops there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know. I always appreciated but he, Neil but, you know, he pops up here and there. You know, you're watching things <clears throat> about comic books and stuff. And, oh, there's Neil Gaiman. And he just always comes across as just a really, really just nice. Like, Neil Gaiman wouldn't do this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and I still can't believe these things people are saying about Bill Cosby. I love his pudding pops. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm really disappointed in him. Now that I think about it, though, his pudding pops were the share. I did like those pudding pops. Yeah. Those pudding pops were very good. But it's difficult to watch Ed Wood now, but I still stand by. It's obvious that, you know, ever since I was probably Eleanor's age, I was... Uh, dressing as a woman and then my parents found out about it and my brother found out about it and they didn't understand and they just labeled me as like a pervert and a freak which made me stay in the closet for way longer than i should have yeah but every girlfriend i had i would always do the like oh my gosh uh debbie sarah you know what we should do you should give me a makeover. Wouldn't that be funny? Oh, just for laughs. Wouldn't that be <laughs> hilarious? And and I one of my one of my first memories growing up was it was late at night and the whole family was in the kitchen and there were steaks and barbecuing and and uh, my parents were hanging out and talking us and being friendly so it must have been a friday or a saturday night and they were drinking yeah so my dad says uh stevie stevie come here come here come here people say that men are stronger than women and this is not true women are way stronger than men and automatically i knew that some shit was up because i grew up in a very traditionally hispanic family meaning sexist as hell my yeah. mom couldn't be in charge of the bank account because women are horrible with money my dad always drove because women are horrible drivers and just a million little things like that yeah so I, my dad was suddenly being like gay feminism and so i knew something was up and he said i mean sure men are more are physically stronger than women but women are stronger emotion because they take care of the children and because they clean the house and also you know what the hardest thing in the world is stevie wearing heels oh. that's the hardest thing ever no guy can wear heels and i'm like okay hold my chocolate milk bitch and then went into the closet and grabbed the highest heels that my mom owned and i spent the entire evening just wearing my mom's heels like dancing around in them and yeah. my parents thought it was funny then but like uh ed wood says in uh glenn or glenda then one day it wasn't halloween any longer <laughs> so then i saw the movie ed wood and i became obsessed with ed wood and now i realized that this was just one of the billion clues that i was trans because, yeah. I mean, I started a fucking religion based on Ed Wood in the 90s. That, that says a lot. Yeah. But, and I do think that if Ed Wood were alive today, if he, if he came into existence now, yeah. that he would see society and how attitudes have changed, and he would be a woman. I, I, I think so. I, I think Glenna Glenda shows that quite a lot. Yeah. I, I absolutely 100% think that. And so you kind of helped me realize this, Bunny, but 
I have reached peak Ed Woodedness. <laughs> okay. I have transcended. That was the yes. word that you used. Yes, I you have, have transcended. I I am such a huge Ed Wood fan that I'm a woman now. <laughs> there so. you go. And I do occasionally, like a few times a year, hear from people who were big fans of the Church of Ed Wood back then and are now trans. Really? And so that's kind of cool. Yeah. So I am I am l- literally the Ed Wood to transgender pipeline. It's all one person right here, and it's me. And I hear from a lot of people who have done this. But it didn't kick until I saw Midsommar. Yeah. It didn't kick until I saw Midsommar. I remember seeing Midsommar in theaters the the day it came out. And it's like, oh, it's a horror movie, but it's all bright and in the daytime. Okay. I'll actually be able to see shit that goes on. I hate going to the movies, going to a horror movie, and it, it's all in the dark. If I'm going into a a mysterious house that might be haunted, first thing I'm doing, I'm turning on all the fucking lights. Yeah. But uh, I saw Midsommar and... Oh, you know what I love? When a scene in a movie is so fucked up that everyone just starts talking. Everyone in the theater just starts talking. That happened during the Trastupa ritual, where yeah. the old guy is jumping off, the, the woman and the man are jumping off. Oh, yeah. Everyone in the theater was suddenly just talking out loud because they were losing their fucking shit. Yeah. And then the guy with the mallet. Oh, man. There were like 12 other people in the theater, and they were all talking as if they were just like at a bar. Just, oh, my God. Is this? No. With what? And everyone's laughing and stuff. It was the fucking Well, but best. that's that's like also a, a film theory that I have. That, like, I don't know so much about people who've seen Midsommar, but, like, The Thing and Speed Racer are my two examples where they bomb at the box office because you're just giving people too much to look at. They have too much sensory input. Yeah. And and therefore they they don't follow the story after that. Yeah. I, I would bet you there would be a similar effect with Midsommar in that scene in particular. You've just yeah. given people way too much to look at. Yeah. And then I edited it on Twitter and I added the song It's Raining Men to that scene. I'm really proud of that. Okay. As the old guy jumps off the cliff. It's raining, man. Hallelujah. It's raining, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. But I saw that movie, I think, six times in theaters. I really? saw the director's cut. I saw the director's cut in theaters twice. Uh,. It, the movie came out at the exact right point because at the end of 2018, my wife got me the AMC A-list membership. Yeah. So I get three free movies a week for twenty four ninety five a month. And so at that time, my wife said, you need to get out of the house more. Go to three movies a week. And so I would force myself to see 90% of everything that came out at that period in time. And I absolutely know that Midsommar is not something that I would have paid for. Yeah. Would not have paid to see that movie. But I did, and I loved it, and I just kept going over and over again, and eventually I realized the fact that, like, it took a while for me to process it, but I was watching the movie, and I wanted to be Danny. I wanted yeah. to get all of the problems of my life and put them in a pyramid and burn that motherfucker down. And that is basically what I did. And now yeah. I'm May Lynn. Oh, definitely. Definitely oh, after you saw that fucking movie, you wanted to be Danny. Did, don't you have yeah. a May Queen head thing Outfit? somewhere? Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I do. 
I do. It's in my. I almost uh, expected you to be wearing it when we came back from the break. I I took a bath right before yeah. we recorded, and it, when I got out of that bath, I'm like, okay, fuck it, no costume changes, no nothing. I'm putting on yeah. something comfy, and I'm leaving it on because it's the next to last episode, bitches. Yeah. I mean that's but, yeah. that's why like for uh, goddamn ten minute warning hmm. that that's why for me kind of running up to your what official announcement whatever happened I, I don't even remember wasn't yeah. too terribly a surprise because after this movie you yeah. wanted to be Danny like fuck yeah so <laughs> that's the thing that I tell people is that there's a lot of people who I and friends with who I worked with for a period of time, or I went to school with, and we kind of knew each other a little bit, but not a lot. And those people, or uh, like cousins or uncles and aunts that I didn't really, that I wasn't really close with. And when those people find out that I'm trans, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I'm I, good for you. I would love to sit down with you and pick your brain. You know, <laughs> I have so many questions. I, good for you living your truth but i think but like the people who knew me knew me yeah really knew me knew me like i can assume that uh most of my exes like sarah snow would be like yeah okay yep that makes sense yeah like i think tom messaged me like a year into my transition saying hey about time and it's like, oh, really? About time? Well, maybe you should have fucking, maybe you could have stuck around and helped me through this in my twenties, you son of a bitch. But whatever, yeah. whatever. So yeah, if you knew me, yeah. really knew me, not a surprise. If you casually knew me, this probably blew your ass away. But but what was impressive to me, because like this whole time doing podcasts, I have been all over your fucking Facebook pictures looking for Uh shit to use for artwork for the show and stuff like that. Yeah. Always some kind of a mug. Always some kind of a silly face. Always some kind of a a look. You know? An act. Something you were hiding behind. They were amusing as fucking hell. But Growing up, I had no idea how to smile. I had no idea how to smile. Oh, just smile. It comes naturally. And it's like... How? I don't know how. I am incapable of smiling. So at a very early age, I adopted this fake smile that looked shitty and that made people laugh. And so whenever anyone would say, smile, I'd go. And so that's me smiling in like 80% of the pictures of me as a guy. So once you started transitioning and accepted yourself... That was a huge fucking change. That oh, was yeah. a huge change. And those oh, were yeah. pictures of somebody who was genuinely happy. Heck yeah. So it was like really remarkable to see. Yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. And I absolutely love it. And it, I say that Midsommar was the movie that cracked my egg. Like uh, Justice Smith. And I saw the TV glow with the pink opaque. And I want to get the pink opaque tattoo right here on my yeah. lower back, right below my uh, neck. Um, <coughs> but it was Midsommar that fully cracked my egg. But it was Ed Wood where my egg has always just been fine. And then I saw Ed Wood and I heard the egg make a noise and i'm like oh shit was that a crack i didn't know i didn't even know these could crack okay well i better take really good care of it but then finally the cracking actually happened with midsummer there's like a 24 25 year gap between these movies and the only the only part of my transition that i regret is the fact that i didn't transition sooner but also it is probably a really good thing that I wasn't a 
insanely drunk 20-year-old trans woman. Yeah. Like, I think it, my transition happening in, the, in, in my 40s, it was just the absolute perfect time because I'm in a <laughs> wonderful marriage with my wife and, you know, I've got kids and it, it was just the absolute perfect time for me to transition was in my 40s. But now I'm trying to, because no one told me that I didn't even know that transitioning was a thing. I, I, I didn't know that this was something that people could do. And so now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, I saw the TV glow everyone and just, there is still time. That's, that's the whole thing, takeaway from I saw the TV glow. There is still time. And I'm trying to let everyone know. There is still time. There is still time. Look at me. I was in my 40s and had no freaking idea what I'm talking about. But these are real. These are real. I <laughs> did it. There is still time. But right now, there's about four minutes and 15 seconds. And so that's all I've got this week yes. for this week's movie. The next to last episode of the podcast in two weeks, October 6th, on the exact date that we started the podcast yes. 10 years ago we will be ending it funny what will we be watching for our last movie this no, is this watch. has been pretty tough this has been pretty tough you know you want to go out on something you know um but in the end you got I want another bite at the apple we're doing I Saw the TV Glow again. Really? Yeah. We're doing I Saw the TV Glow again? Yeah, because I also think if you take all the movies we've done twice, that kind of sums us up. What? The Giant Big Claw, hat. Cats, uh, Ed Wood, Midsommar, and I Saw the TV Glow. Fuck, we did uh, Night of the Living Dead four times. Well, that episode. doesn't quite count. Yeah, I did I think of that. Yeah. Um, but yes, I, 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 there's more to talk about. There's a lot more there to is. talk about. This there's a lot movie. more to talk about. I'm down with that. I'm absolutely down with that. So next week, we're finishing off the podcast with a second look at I Saw the TV Glow. Very excited about that getting the deep dive of that bitch so that's next week but now that i look back at this week the highs the lows the ups the downs willem dafoe and um m the malaysian flight that disappeared hurricane florence uh the rise of skywalker batman v superman i gotta say funny i think that this episode with very little writing uh i think this episode was Pretty good episode. Again. This has been a okay. damn good episode. Okay, good. I felt that same way, but I didn't want to step on your toes because I feel like you're the one who makes that distinction, not me. And I, I you know, I don't want to step on any toes here. But yes, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Maylin, and on behalf of Maxwell and Eleanor and, and Q, and not Natasha and Amber, who are in the East Coast right now, riding yeah. subways and catching taxis, not that I'm jealous or bitter in any way. I love being the one that stays at home to take care of these kids. I just like to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. TVs. And you TVs? Eleanor. 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 Cookie. Cookie? Okay, cookie. Do 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 do. Hey, I'm gonna actually get to finish the episode. Do 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 do. Steady papa do wow. Cut. And print and put it on a cookie. That's very cute. And cut.